Hello there, so next to me is my brand new Dell XPS Special Edition 8940. It's very similar to the Dell G5 5000 they sell. And I saw on the Dell support forums, as well as on YouTube and other places, that the cooling inside this box is a lot to be desired. That's the compromise when you buy a Dell, especially during a pandemic when ideally I would have built my own system, but graphics cards are kind of rare. So the only way to get a high-end graphics card was to purchase something like this. So based on what I saw on the support forums and YouTube videos, a lot of people have talked about adding additional fans, replacing the CPU cooler, and we're curious if that would give them better results better performance, more FPS. So we did that and well, I think you'll find the results interesting. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, first of all, my name is Paul. This is my channel where nerdy is cool. I'm big into 3D printing, cosplay, technology, flight sims, you name it, I'm into it. So this was kind of a fun project for me because for 25 years, I was an IT guy and I left that role to go into research 3D printing and here I am again. So this has been an interesting project. First, let's stop there and if you've never seen my videos before and you find me kind of interesting, hit the button down below and become a subscriber. Okay, let's start with before. So, as it sits right now, the Dell XPS 8940 is full of bloatware. So, Gamers Nexus had made a great video talking about all the junk that's on this thing. So, one of the first things we did was went through and uninstalled a lot of the Dell stuff that we just did not need. Then after that, it was time to go shopping. Based on the suggestions on the Dell support forum thread that talks about the improved cooling, we went with the NHD9L, the uh, CPU cooler from Noctua. Uh, it has the fan in the center with a great big grill on out, uh, both sides. That looks like a very promising CPU uh, cooler. And then over here, I have a pile of fans. Now, right now, as this thing sits, it only has one fan in the back. It's an 80 millimeter fan, and it's a kind of wimpy one at that. So, there's not a lot of opportunity for heat and hot air to get out of this thing. So, based on the suggestions from that thread, I got for the to replace the rear fan, we have a 92 millimeter fan. This is an NFA9. I'll give the complete list in the description here. So there's that one. Uh, we have an 80 millimeter fan. This is an NFA8. Our, the hope is that maybe by moving some wires around and clearing some stuff out, maybe we can fit an 80 millimeter fan down here in the front. That should get some more airflow going across the RTX 3070. And well, the thought is it can't hurt. Then we have what's gonna be going in front here is a 120 millimeter fan. This is an NFA12 by 25. Now my system has a uh, one terabyte uh, NVMe and I have a one terabyte mechanical hard drive and it's currently mounted in the front. Uh, it's pretty easy to move this to the top position, which, which I'm gonna do, uh, and then, this was made by uh, one of the members of the uh, Dell community. He goes by the name on Thingiverse as Purple Drill Monkey. Uh, yeah, I got it correct. And what this is gonna do is this offers a way to attach this fan to this mount. And then what will happen is this will fit where that hard drive mount uh, currently is. So it should just be a matter of attach fan, bolt this guy in, and we're good to go. Okay, with that said, we wanna do some before stats. So I ran Cinebench, I think it's R22 is the one I ran, and I also did 3D Mark, and I also have the hardware info, which gives me some information as far as what's going on with the CPU voltages and temperatures. So I ran those, and I'll be doing those next. Okay, so see these temperatures? Boom, they were 97, now they're down to 76, 74, what have you. Now, as we uh, pan up the voltages, which should usually be like 1.3 and what have you, are all gonna be 0.9, so it's throttling down to cool off. But our overall score, as you can see there, 10578. Now look at the 3D mark test, and take a look at the purple line, see how jaggy it is? So there's the throttling going on. Okay, so that's all said and done. It's time to get this upgrade rolling. So I took all kinds of video during it. Uh, I made sure I had all the important things and the anti-static strap and off we went. We're gonna use an anti-static 
So we're gonna make sure that we're, everything's unplugged, we're good and grounded before we start messing around and removing components. Okay, so this part here, we're taking the hard drive out of the front and removing the uh, hard drive holder in the top. And what we're gonna do is, uh, that's gonna be the new home for the uh, hard drive. Uh, they got all kinds of wires snagged up in this mount, so this slowed me down a little bit. So there it is, the hard drive is now up top, and we're just bolting that in. Okay, we're taking the front off. And you can see the 3D printed part is on top of that 120 millimeter fan and one screw. I was a little concerned about the bottom, but uh, so far no wires have touched. And we get the uh, splitter going in, and then in here we have the uh, rubber mounts for the rear fan, which is now the 92 millimeter fan. And you'll see here in a second as I push those through. Just gotta get them lined up just right. Give it a couple tugs, and it's in. Okay, so we're getting all the wires sorted out here, just making sure. Because you wanna make sure you're using the, uh, the four wires. So there's the front, there's that one. These are the uh, little uh, wire routing clips that were inside that bottom. So I removed those and now that's where the 80 millimeter fan is gonna fit and blow right on top of the video card. Okay, I just plugged it in to see if things are, are moving. Fan, fan, fan. And that fan's moving too. Don't have anything plugged into the uh, video, but this gives me hope that everything's happy. Okay, something I'm doing just so this cable isn't loose and can hit the fan, I just used a zip tie through and back. Just so it's loose, but just to keep things tidy. Okay, now out comes the stock CPU cooler, and as you can see, when the focus plays nicely, you loosen those four screws until they all pop out and out it is okay so I've already taken the uh, rubbing alcohol and cleaned off most of the gook but I'm using a microfiber cloth here to double check I, I got a few spots there where apparently when they installed it the factory it oozed out and now those M3 screws the uh, 25 millimeter long screws are going in nice shot on my elbow here and uh, threading each of those in. Okay, on top of those will be the uh, black spacers. And you can see the mounts right there. We're getting the last of those finger tight, then tighten them up with the screwdriver. Little pea-sized bit of the silicone, of the uh, thermal paste, and there it is. CPU cool is on board. The fan will go in the middle, and as you can see, uh, the way it's going to go is it's all going to go straight out the back. And there we are. Before we secured the fan in place, just wanted to get a good shot of how everything looks all set up. So total time for this was well, I was going cautious. So it was about two or three hours, or just every step of the way, just checking and double checking. But uh, the old, um, there was a mount inside there that uh, held the uh, graphics card that's not going back in. I, it's obviously the fan would be in the way. So we're gonna button everything back up and we're gonna plug the monitor in and power this guy up and make sure we have no PWM errors. And there it is. It's up and running and booting and happy. All right, now the fun stuff. Let's find out if this all worked. Did we spend 125 bucks for nothing or what? 
So here we go. I'm gonna try to get these side by side here, but uh, uh, first of all, let's let's just do the the basics here. So let's just uh, show you the before uh, of 3D Mark, and let's show you the after. We'll try to get those side by side, and you're gonna see that we really didn't gain much on the graphics card, but on the CPU, there's a sizable increase. And now we're gonna run uh, Cinebench, and that's gonna run. And as you can see from the results here, that's a much better number as well too. Uh, the other thing I want you to, to take note of here is look, I, I did a run with, of this with uh, hardware info running, and uh, look at the voltages and look at the temperatures. So now you have the after results here. Let's show you them side by side. Uh, I think a really good one for this one would be like the 3D mark test here. And uh, I'm trying to line these up side by side here so you can see the before, which would be on the left, and the after, which would be on the right. And as you can see going through here, I mean, the CPU is way cooler. There's no, there's no change in the graphics card. FPS surprisingly isn't really changed that much. There's a lot of instances where it's a little bit better and there's a lot of instances where it's about the same. But the bigger number I want you to pay attention to here that I'm noticing is the CPU. In, in a few instances it, it, it does get warm but it stays a lot cooler than before. Okay, the obvious question. Is this a worthwhile upgrade? Is it worth spending 125 bucks in fans? plus trying to find this 3D printed bracket, having it printed for you, uh, worth it. I say so, and here's why. The CPU temp, that was the big thing for me. When I saw the benchmarks comparing them side by side, seeing a 20 degree Celsius difference between before and after, that's huge. That means that my processor is not throttling down as much due to heat. And I think that's very important. I mean, whatever applications you guys are running, whether it's games or in my case, I'll be running Streamlabs or OBS and every now and then I'll fly some DCS on this. Obviously, the better the processors perform, the better the game or application performs. So I think that's a yes for me. As for the graphics card, I didn't see any gains there. I think adding the 80 millimeter fan, I kind of knew I wouldn't gain anything there. The, I mean, the, the graphics card has two fans on it already. Um, if I was gonna see any gains, it would have probably been if I taken the graphics card apart and maybe got rid of the thermal paste, put something better on there, but that, that's a hill I don't want to climb. The only other thing I could think of where I might see some gains, and I've seen some other people talk about this, is the voltage regulator modules that are on the motherboard. I've seen people put heat sinks on those or fans on those. How much they gain off that? Is it worth the investment? That I can't answer, but for this video and about these three fans and the CPU cooler, I do feel that it's a worthwhile investment to get additional airflow and get that CPU running a lot cooler. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below about this solution here. It's not mine. Like I said, I got all these ideas from the uh, Dell community and I thank them for all their help. Uh, they've been very good at giving me information on how to do this. Uh, if you've already done something similar to this, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm sure myself and other viewers would love the input. And that's it for this time. As always, if you wanna know what I'm up to, check me out on social media. I am on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course, the website where nerdyiscool.com. If you're not a subscriber, I wish you'd hit that button down below and become one. I don't want you to miss any of my cool videos. And that's it for this time. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Take care. I got 32 gigs of memory. Memory? Memory. Memories. Anyway. Uh, we did a, a bit of, uh, can't talk today. Let's try that from the top. The bench, uh, version R20. <laughs> Potential for more. I don't like the way that sounded. Five, four, three, two.